another WordPress Wednesdays video. My name is Corey Ashton and I'm one of the WordPress experts here at Webtegrity. And today we're going to get started on WordPress CSS tips for the total beginner. Check this out. So just really briefly, before we get started on any sort of changes to your style sheet, I have this tip right here. We want to be sure to back up your WordPress style sheet. So whatever you do before we get excited and get started in changing things, um, we, we want to just be sure that you've got either a, a backup of the style sheet itself or back up your whole WordPress website if you can. Um, also, if a little bit more advanced area, if you wanted to make these changes, you could be using a child theme to make these custom, customization changes. Or some authors um, are really cool and give you a, a space called a custom CSS box, something like this, where you can drop in some style sheet elements and overwrite the main style sheet. And this kind of acts like a child theme in some ways when it comes to your uh, additional CSS. So this is a pretty cool feature. Be sure to check to see if your author has allowed a, a box like that. If not, you can either make a, a child theme or you can go to your appearance and go to editor and this of course is your style sheet where you can make all of these changes that we're about to uh, uh, learn. So the very first tip we're going to start off with is changing your font color and size. A lot of authors will give you the opportunity to make these changes inside of uh, you know uh, an area to customize in your in your theme. All of that varies um, but sometimes you can go to something that looks like a typography and you can make some changes immediately using um, options like this. But let's say there's something on your website like maybe the title text up here you wanted to change or maybe this area here you wanted to change this to a red color and you don't know how to do that and the author didn't give you the ability to easily. This is how we do it. All of the tips I'm about to show you I'm going to use uh, a free extension inside of Firefox which is the browser I use. So this is a free extension called Firebug. If you jump over there and download that you can either do a Google search for um, Firebug or inside the article here down on the second uh, tip I have. I have the link right here to the Firebug tool. Download that, activate it, and that's the plugin, uh, that's the extension we're going to use right now. So over here on the right side once you activate that Firebug tool, uh, you'll have a little bug up here in your dashboard area. You click on that and then a screen opens up that's going to show you the left side uh, of just some HTML here of what your website looks like and the right side here is the style sheet information. Uh, don't get freaked out. This is a lot of nerd code but I'm going to walk you through uh, how to use this tool so you can see how powerful it is. There's a little icon over here on the left side that's a select element. When you click on that you can see now it gives you a box that allows you to kind of hover over a, a particular spot on your website and it allows you to select it. So I want to change the color of this text here. So I'm going to click on it and immediately that window opens back up for Firebug. It's going to show me that the area I've selected in the HTML is the H1 or the header 1. The class of it is called Entry Title and there's my text right there. On this right side I see entry title and it's showing me some of the options that are manipulating that bit of text right there. What I see right here is entry title, here's the color code and we see that it's kind of this darker gray, almost a black color code. So if I bring this window down we'll be able to see kind of both views here for a second. I am going to change this color code option here to be a red color and see what that looks like. See if I like the way it looks. FF one, two, three, four. And right away you see it's this bright red color that I've been able to change it to. So this little firebug tool really is just used as kind of a very quick um, way to evaluate what's going on on your page. In order to actually make this change permanent, what I would do is I would select entry title, I'm going to click on it and copy that to my clipboard and uh, close down that screen, come over here to theme options, you can either go into your style sheet or your custom CSS box and overwrite things. If I wanted to use a style sheet or a child theme this is how I would do it. I would drop that in, open up the element, write in color, use the hashtag and put my color code. Oops, 
one, two, three, four, there you go. Close that element completely and click Save Options. Coming back to the front side of my website, if I click Refresh, now that should stay that nice red color and across the whole website now any of my entry titles should be this nice red color. I could also make that change if I did not have one of these theme option boxes or if I did not want to use a, um, a child theme to make these manipulations. I could actually go directly into the style sheet itself. I would click on appearance and go to editor. I would do a search for entry title and this is that color code that we saw earlier we want to take that out we want to replace it with the color code we want scroll down click update file and now that will overwrite what we originally had there remember though that anytime you update your theme whenever that's going to be required anything you're doing inside this style sheet, sheet could easily be overwritten so that's one reason why you just want to be sure to go ahead and use um, either that custom CSS box or a child theme. The same way we just manipulated that to change the color is the same way we would manipulate it to change the size. So we come up here, click on Firebug, select uh, the tool that we want to grab the area to manipulate. Here, entry title, we see the color code that we dropped in. Font size is set to 32 right now. So if you were to increase that font size, increase that number, uh, to take it to 42, you see how big it is? Or we can also minimize it, take it down to 22. You can play around with whatever number you want to put in there and see how that manipulates the size of it. Again, we're going to go back to that same area that we just made those changes to the, um, the color. And here's our font size here. If we wanted to change that here inside the style sheet, we would manipulate that number, click Update, and the change would be live to the website. Just be sure that whenever you're affecting things like this uh, to check throughout the whole website and be sure that, that even though we're only manipulating the entry title area, you want to be sure that that's not changing anything else on your website. It should only be affecting the entry title. Alright, moving right along, we're going to go ahead and learn how to change a background color on your website. Let's say that your author doesn't allow you to very quickly and easily change whatever color is around your page, but you want to do that. You want something more dynamic. Well, the way we're going to do that is, first of all, you want to figure out what kind of uh, color you actually want back there, okay? So I use another extension, a free extension on Firefox called Colorzilla. So I'm just going to click on that and run down here and maybe say, I like this turquoise color. Let's ch choose that color, and that's the color I want to be set as my background. So since I'm using that fun little extension called Colorzilla, um, it's now colored, uh, it's now copied rather, the color code that that color is onto my clipboard. So I can come now with my Firebug extension, click on my Select Element tool, and on the background of my page here, uh, come up to the body area and see here, check this out. Right here it says background color. F2, 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 and that's that little light gray color. Well, we want to change that and just see if this is the right area to be manipulating and adding in. And you can see already, there's that beautiful pop of turquoise behind our page. So we know that we're looking for the body tag. That's the area we want to go into to manipulate the background color for every single page or post on your website. So in order to make that change actually go live on your website, we need to go to the body area of your style sheet. Now again, whether that's inside of a uh, child theme or inside of your editor area here, we're going to need to do a search for body. And you don't want color, you want background color. So we would change this area here with our color code and we would click update file. That's actually how you would change the background color on any area. If you, if you maybe you wanted your widget box over here to have um, that turquoise background color. You would just come over, highlight this area, and here we find that it says the background color is white. We would change that, and you see now that everything running down your uh, right sidebar is has this beautiful background color on it. It's that simple to make those changes, um, but be sure you're affecting the correct area. This particular author called its his sidebar well who would have known that? So sometimes it's not always named something obvious and that's why this Firebug tool is a really cool resource 
uh, to, to have to be able to very quickly and easily find those areas that you want to manipulate. The fourth tip I want to show you is affecting links on your website. A lot of authors will allow you to do this very quickly and easily inside of a WYSIWYG area or your dashboard area to customize the theme, but if they don't and you really want your text that's linked on an article to be a different color from anything else, a nice contrasting color so that as people are scrolling down and reading your article, they can quickly see what text is an actual link. Um, as their eyes are drawn to those things. So in order to make those happen, um, you'll, you'll want to uh, make changes to the A element inside of your style sheet. And you can uh, manipulate different things like when it's hovered over, maybe what color it changes to whenever your cursor is hovered over a link. So these are all the different options here that you can use uh, to affect a link. That's when it maybe when it's visited or again when it's hovered over, when it's active. Um, and you would do that just by, again, if you wanted to, use your Firebug tool, come over and click on a link on your, your uh, page, and you'd be able to see right away that all of the links are set to this color. So if you wanted to manipulate that, you would go in your style sheet and look for the A element. Uh, and those are your links. Again, that'll affect every single text link across your entire website. It might, depending upon how your author coded, also affect a top menu if you had one or any of your right side um, menu options. So just be sure that whenever you're making those changes that those things are not affected um, if you don't want them to be. List styles. This is pretty cool because you can do all sorts of fun stuff to manipulate how these bullet points look, how far over things are indented. Uh, if you wanted to have an actual image be here instead of a, a circle, you can do that um, by using these codes here. This gives you a couple of different options. This, this would actually manipulate and change things to uh, an image. So you'd have to upload it to your website through your media folder. You can upload it um, here, if you wanted to add a new image to your media library, you can add an icon there. And then you would have the path of wherever that image sits, and you would just paste it right there. And this is the code then that you would go look for inside your style sheet, the ULLI. Uh, so that's for your list items. And there's all sorts of different list types you can do. You can change them to circles. That's what we show here. If you wanted those to be squares, you would just come here, select an item, and we would see right away inside of our uh, UL that it doesn't even actually have, by default, it makes them uh, be circles. But if we wanted to manipulate those, we could add in uh, list style, and we could say square. And notice right up here, it's changed now to square icons. Uh, pretty cool. So there's also a link I've listed here inside of the article that'll give you all sorts of different options that you can go to and check those out. Hide element. This is a really cool feature that, that or, or resource rather that some people want to hide certain features on their website. Maybe maybe something like a search bar is up here, and instead of just you know obviously on this one, if I wanted to remove that, I could go into my appearance and go to widgets, and just take that search bar out, you know, delete it. But maybe an author has coded that search bar to sit up here in your header, and you can't figure out how to hide that option. Um, you can actually use something called display none and it will quote unquote hide an item or not display it. So using my firebug tool, I'm just clicking on the element to figure out where that is. I'm gonna come here and type in display none and immediately that takes it away. And if that little button is there, you could go ahead and just um, keep on adding that option of display none. There you go, and now completely that's that's totally hidden. The only thing you need to, th this is just a warning. Notice that I'm manipulating something that says input field. It wasn't just a search bar that I was trying to hide. This input field might actually affect any other uh, contact forms or any other forms you might have on your website. So just be sure that whenever you display none, something like that on your website, that it has not affected anything else on your website. Um, but I, I give you that uh, exact code right here on number six. Number seven, border styles. This is what I was referencing earlier when it comes to adding a border around an image. You can also add a border around content boxes like this. You see there's a little very thin one pixel line around here. You can manipulate borders 
by increasing the uh, width size of the border, the number here, the higher, of course, the thicker the line. You can uh, manipulate how it actually displays. Do you want it to be dotted or dashed, double ridged, all sorts of options here. And then you can also change the color. It doesn't have to be that black border we were talking about. So if you wanted to, you can make it a nice, a nice gray color or turquoise or whatever color you want to match the beautiful branding on your website. Uh, aligning things on your WordPress website is pretty fun. Let's say you didn't want something like this option here, aligned left. You wanted it actually centered down the page. Uh, that can be tricky sometimes. So you want to come in here using your Firebug tool. I'm going to grab the select element and I'm going to look here and see what this author has coded for me. These are H2 tags sitting in here. So I want to come over here to H2. Let me drop down the screen a little bit so you can see one while we're doing this. H2. I'm just going to add the, uh, the option here for text, align, center. Check that out. Immediately all my H2s on the whole website are going to be beautifully centered right down the page. Just be sure again to note that this does not uh, just only affect this one page. This will affect any H2 you have on your entire website. But there are all sorts of options. So right align, left align, or center. Um, you can just kind of have fun and play around with what that looks like. I'm going to refresh and take things back to that left side uh, alignment and move on to number nine. Margins to add some space around things. This is pretty fun because if you say, for instance, you didn't like the fact that this categories title here, that, that this content was so close, or maybe you needed it closer, you didn't like that big gap there. You manipulate that by playing around with margin spacing. Some authors use padding. It kind of just depends on uh, on what they've placed in there. Let's see here, it says second widget margin bottom 50 pixels. So that's the margin at the bottom of the widget box, giving this beautiful padding here between each individual box. So if you didn't want that much space between the two boxes, you could zip that up. And you see right away, taking it from 50 pixels to 30 pixels, minimize that spacing beautifully. Um, but if we wanted to manipulate exactly what I was saying earlier, maybe shrinking this up, we would come here to the categories area click on that and we see that the secondary widget H3 which is typically that title that's the color of that name categories has a margin bottom of 25 pixels well we don't want that we want 15 pixels we want to zip that up a little bit making that change obviously inside of Firebug does not actually affect your website this is just kind of playing around with how that looks so we've got to highlight that uh, element title and either again go into your uh, child theme and make that change or go into your actual editor here and make that change the margin bottom 25 we don't want it to be 25 we want it to be 15 and just make that save and you'll see that change happen across your entire website very cool and there's all sorts of options you can do with um, margin spacing so I've given you that kind of here it says you know if you wanted to manipulate different um, on uh, different spacing on different sides of the element, uh, the top, right, bottom, or left, you can kind of play around with that here. Number 10 and our final tip is the exclamation point important tip of the day. This is not the best practice. I want to stress that. You really don't want to have to stress to overwrite something inside of your style sheet because later on, if you've forgotten you've done that, it's very difficult to overwrite this element. So you, you really need to be sure if you can to go into the actual element itself and make the change to it or write it inside of your style sheet to manipulate things. But if you're struggling, if you've said, Corey, you know, I've done everything you told me to do and it's still not changing anything. Nothing is, is center aligning like I'm telling it to do. It, it's not working. You can add this exclamation important inside of the element option here. And that should stress to overwrite anything else found in any other style sheet. This basically then trumps anything else inside of your style sheet. Uh, so it's a really cool option to use. Just again, not the best option because if you ever had to come back and change things, uh, sometimes that could cause a little bit more difficulty. So the most common errors that happen inside of manipulating anything inside of your WordPress CSS is typically misspellings. Um, so if you go in there and you type in, you know, text align and you misspelled the word align, your item is not going to align correctly. So be sure to double check all your spellings. And also another common uh, error is forgetting to end. You know, you've got to put this end element on uh, this end parentheses on all of your elements whenever you want to close them. 
So no matter what, just take your time and be sure to save the original file of your style sheet so that you don't have a headache later on down the road in case you do kind of, whoops, mess up something. I hope all of those tips help you get a better understanding of how you can change your theme and make it look exactly like you want. If you have some more questions, please be sure if you're in the San Antonio area to check out our WordPress meetup group. Uh, we meet very regularly and we also are going to be producing these videos every single Wednesday of the month so that you can come back here to our YouTube channel, subscribe, and check out some great videos that are going to cover a wide range of topics, anywhere from responsive design to developer resources to SEO topics, everything to do with WordPress itself. So check out the links below, connect with us soon, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Bye-bye, y'all.